So uh, today we're going to talk a little bit more about the impact of Windows 10 on the enterprise. Um, now, if you've already completed your migration to Windows 10 and you're running the latest release, you can go ahead and disconnect now, right? Uh, I don't think there's much that I can tell you that you need to know. Um, however, if you're not there yet um, or you haven't started your migration, this is definitely the event for you. So I thought a little bit about how to how to start this off and you know why would you want to listen to my opinions and how am I going to be credible on this and uh, I thought a little bit about a guy on the side of a milk carton um, and this guy used to be me so I've got about 17 years in enterprise IT uh, focused exclusively on systems management and, and to me what that means is things like operating system deployment or imaging uh, software delivery, uh, collecting inventory, hardware, software, user stuff, patching systems, and, and generally knowing where workstations are and what they're doing and making sure that our, our end users can make use of them um, and kind of deliver on the why of our organization, right? So I, I've been this guy pulling my hair out. Um, I've done things like deploy Windows Vista and try to figure out how to make one tool work with another or figure out why I can't remote control one version of Windows and uh, the other one works and, and so I've been through a lot of that shared pain with you and, and that's why I think I can I can provide some relevant insights. Uh, we also have a, a broad exposure to a large number of customers so I talk to a few hundred customers each year. Uh, we have a few vendors that we have relationships with that, that give me access to a lot of different types of organizations and different industries. Um, so hopefully I can share some of those insights with you and, and help you avoid some of the pitfalls we've seen, uh, reduce your risk and, and lower your costs around your systems management program. So before we get into uh, demystifying a little bit about Windows 10 and helping everybody keep their job, let's talk about the past few decades in IT because I think that's an important foundation to set. You know, we really feel like we're in what we call the experience era. It's really all about the end user, right? How do they get what they want, when they want? How do they work where they want on the devices they love? Uh, we call these folks productive users, uh, and we believe this is a real and hard trend that, that everyone is seeing, whether they recognize all the signs or not. Uh, you know, if you're wondering what I mean by this, just think about the things that people actually use in your business, right? Office applications line of business applications that your company produces or buys or maybe subscribes to as a, a, a SaaS offering, the number of emerging productivity applications that you're probably struggling with, right? Um, I'm guessing that most of your organizations use Slack. You may not even know about it. Uh, you may have Dropbox. Uh, you may have people using cloud services um, to spin up test environments that you don't know about. And really, that, that's not a reversible trend. Um, it's not going to slow down. We don't think it's going to stop. And we really want to talk about how do we get ahead of this? We don't want to be caught flat-footed, right? And I think IT has a history of resisting these trends. Um, and really, the most relevant thing and kind of how we tie this to Windows 10 is we want to be focused on the end user experience um, as sort of how we approach our systems management program going forward. Uh, and, and that's kind of where we're going to frame this up today. So let me explain what I mean by that. When I look at Windows 10, that is truly a fourth era platform, right? So we describe that as the, the user experience era. There are several new challenges we're all facing. Um, one, we have these very mature on-premise systems management tools, but they're losing relevance, right? If they can't manage mobile devices like they manage desktops and laptops. If we can't provide a consistent productivity experience across a mobile phone, a laptop, a desktop, or a virtual desktop environment. Uh, the cloud tools that are relevant to some of those use cases aren't yet mature enough, right? So uh, if you look at some of the pure cloud systems management offerings, they're really only focused on mobile. They can't solve those traditional systems management use cases. So we're in a real pickle right now where we're in a period of time that we can't really speed up on our own and we have to stitch tools together or create our own processes or create our own automation um, in order to try to tie those use cases together and, and best serve our, our end users. And really what's happening is, is we're failing to do that. Um, and don't take it personally, it's, it's a broad trend that we see. Uh, something that we talk about a lot with CIOs and CSOs is NPS scores, which is Net Promoter Score, if you wanna look into that. And that's really how do your end users perceive your value, right? Would they recommend you? Would they talk positively about you? Uh, you're always going to have detractors in IT. 
Uh, you're often going to have a lot of folks that are neutral, but the more promoters you have, um, the better your situation is going to be. And the, the, the ground truth here is that we're in a very difficult situation now where the tools don't provide what we need in a seamless way. Uh, we have a lot of evolving use cases and a lot of external pressures, and we're still playing catch up in a lot of ways in IT. Uh, and that translates to end users maybe not being as happy as we want them to be. And the cost to solve these issues are certainly rising and rising very quickly. So as I kind of wrap up the foundation here and, and get to talking about Windows 10, this is a very hard balance to strike, right? We're, we're all in this, in this um, struggle together. Uh, it's hard to keep people productive while keeping them protected and not impeding that. If you think about things like patch compliance, uh, you know, your CSO might want a certain threshold for patch compliance and they might want it very quickly. Uh, but the actual implementation of that is far more nuanced, right? You know, how do you tell a, a field salesperson that they have to go to a Starbucks every Tuesday at 11 a.m. so they can get patched up? It's, it's probably not what's in their, uh, in their plan of productivity for the day. Um, so it's a really hard balance to strike. And the same thing is keeping OSs updated, right? Especially as we see more and more mobile or field users, we really don't have uh, an operating system deployment capability that works across WAN links, right? And it's, we've all talked about trying to image over wireless or trying to image remote users. I'm guessing that many of us are still sending out USB keys. Um, or having to recall remote users into a field service location, or even some cases back to headquarters to get updated. And again, that's all pressure on our patch compliance, on keeping our, our operating systems updated, and providing those productive users the, the best platform to work on. And there's a lot of external pressure on us right now, especially what, with what Microsoft is doing, our hardware OEMs are doing. And, and so let's talk about that a little bit and see if I can provide you a little help. So I'm a big fan of this guy. Uh, you may recognize him. Uh, he has a famous quote, uh, which I won't read to you, uh, but it really, to me, gets to the essence of where we're at, right? There's a lot of things we think are true, uh, especially when it comes to systems management, but they're really not anymore. And there's one thing that I want you to keep in your subconscious as I'm talking here. Windows 10 is inevitable. And if you think that's not true for you, I'm going to tell you that you're wrong, and I'm going to try to convince you with some evidence here today. So let me explain why this is important to you. And as we go forward to explain that, it's really important that we all understand the new framework, the new methodology. We understand what these numbers mean, right? And what servicing plans are and what current branch versus current branch for business is because there's a ton of new terminology out there. There's not really a very simple guide to it. And so you're really dependent upon um, thought leaders in the systems management community to really explain it to you uh, because it's not something that's being talked about inside your organizations. And, you know, the vendor doesn't have much of a motivation to really fully explain it to you. So let me talk a little bit about this. Um, Windows 10 came out in the summer of 2015. The first version was called 1507. And this is a very simple convention. It's four digits. The first two are the year and the last two are the month. This is the year and month in which the operating system release was basically completed. Um, you may refer to this as like code freeze or RTM or GA general availability, but it's whenever Microsoft finished and said, okay, this releases at the quality that we want to send it out to the public. So the first version of that was 1507. In the fall of that year, we had an update that came fairly quickly, which was just simply called the November update. Um, I think the names are getting cooler now, so that's a good thing, and we kind of know what to call them. There's also some internal code names that you might be familiar with, like Redstone, that are meaningless to your end users or, or pretty much anybody in your IT organization. They, they need to know, A, it's Windows 10, and B, you really need to know what release you're at, and the implications of that are, are pretty severe, and we're going to talk about that. So then in the summer of 2016, we got version 1607. Uh, this was simply called the anniversary update, um, which provided a lot of new features and functionality and caught up on a lot of our, our uh, quality fixes and things we wanted to get. And on April 11th, we received version 1703. Uh, this is commonly known as the creator's update. So you may be just finding out about this. Uh, Kind of an interesting point we're already on the second version of the creators update um, they pushed out an update last week 
Um, so we have a new build of Windows 10 version 1703, and there's already been two of those released in the last 30 days. So that's just one indication of the pace at what we're moving. So what do you need to know about this? Well, one, we're used to a traditional 10-year life cycle for an operating system, right? Um, generally, Microsoft releases a version of Windows. There's five years of mainstream support, followed by five years of extended support. We're in the same place with Windows 7 and 8.1 today, right? They're both in extended support and they're quickly coming to a close. Um, your new life cycle for an operating system for Microsoft is really about 20 months um, at most. I think that's getting shorter and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. But what I really want you to take away from, from this slide is the pace at what you must move now and how current branch for business releases affect you is only getting faster and you really don't know how short of a timeline you have. So for example, as 1703 was released on April 11th, that started a grace period counter. Um, so version 1507 will, will go unsupported uh, actually in just a few days from now. I think it's next Tuesday. So that means if you deployed Windows 10 1507 and got it out into your environment, it's not gonna be supported in a couple of months. And if you deployed version 1511, that's going to come unsupported in a few months from now. Um, if you're just now deploying 1607, you have about a year to 15 months before that becomes completely unsupported. And what I mean by that is you cannot get security patches, right? So critical updates will not come out for these operating systems as they go unsupported. And the reason for that is Microsoft has stated very publicly, they will only maintain two current branch for business releases in the market at any one time. So today, 1511 and 1607 both have current branch for business releases and they are the supported baselines. Version 1703 is new. It is only at the current branch level, which means it hasn't been deemed quality or readiness for your business. But once it does go to current branch for business, which we expect in, in a few months from now, that will start the 60 day counter on 1511. So I know that's a lot, what you need to understand is that only two are supported at any one time. And once you see a new current branch for business release, you need to lop off the, the previous second release. So again, just reiterating today, 1511 and 1607 are current branch for business supported. 1703 will be current branch for business in a few months. And once that happens, you have 60 days to get all of your devices off of 1511 before they're unsupported. Now, before I go on to talking about some things I think you need to do, I want to revisit some safe havens that we talked about on our last webcast uh, in March. So let's talk about those real quick, and, and we refer to those as safe havens. Now, the first thing, there's no safe haven in Windows 7. You can't stay there. There's a few reasons for that. One is your OEMs can't sell you Windows 7 or 8.1 anymore. They stopped selling them in October of 2016. So you can't get a new PC with an old operating system. You got to buy Windows 10. Also, in October 2016, Microsoft backported the cumulative update model from Windows 10 into Windows 7 and 8. So that wasn't a safe haven, right? You couldn't stay operating on 7 and 8.1 to avoid this new aggressive patch model because they simply backported it to the existing operating systems. One of the next things that a lot of my clients talk about is, well, we'll just defer these feature updates that you've been talking about and we won't in install them. Well, that's not an option because you can only re defer twice and you can really only get 12 months out of date before they're gonna turn off your security updates. So that's not a safe haven. And then finally, some of my clients looked at the long-term servicing branch, which is a separate release of Windows 10 that has a two to three year cycle and said, well, we'll just deploy LTSB and we won't have to do, deal with any of this. Well, here's the problem. LTSB, Microsoft has been saying all along, is only intended for special use machines. So if you're a hospital, that means something in an OR, right? Where it's operating a medical device that can't be updated on a monthly basis. If you have distribution facilities and let's say you're a warehousing company, that means your factory floor machine, right? That can't be updated and we can't interrupt the line of business at. But what we found out recently is Microsoft says that only the current generation silicon is going to be supported for any LTSB release, which means that new hardware that comes out as you replace it 
you're not going to be able to update um, or support that hardware unless you reinstall LTSB, which means you're really not on that long-term life cycle anyways. And one thing that we've heard is we're not going to see new hardware updates for LTSB until 2019. So we would not recommend that as a safe haven. So the final safe haven that we like to talk about, and again, go back and, and watch the recording of the March webinar if you need a foundation on this. There's a lot that's been happening, but I like to talk about this as CPU detection as a weapon. Um, so back in 2015, 2016, Microsoft and Intel got together and they said, well, you know what? We're not going to allow people who buy new hardware based on these newer uh, generation uh, Skylake chipsets. We're not going to let them install Windows 7 and 8 on those and, and, and keep getting them updated, right? We want them to be on the current version of Windows, which at the time was going to be Windows 10. So they tried to force this on the market and the market pushed back pretty substantially and, and they wound up pushing the dates out to 2017 and then 2018 and then finally just abandoning that plan altogether. So that means today Windows 7 technically has um, extended support through 2020 sometime in July and Windows 8.1 has extended support through 2023. You cannot depend on this. Here's the reason why you've got to refresh the hardware between now and then. The new chipset, which is called Cabby Lake, will only run Windows 10. And we've seen a couple of things recently. One, if you install Windows 7 or 8 on the later generation of Skylake or the seventh generation, which is Cabby Lake, Microsoft will not provide you updates. You'll actually get an error in Windows Update that says you can't install these updates because it's not supported. We're seeing the same thing with AMD, that their seventh generation um, Ryzen processors will, will follow the same uh, program. So. That's one part of the problem is the hardware manufacturer in conjunction with the software manufacturer is ensuring that you can't run an older OS on newer hardware and they're gonna detect the CPU as a part of the Windows update process and block those updates. The second thing is if you thought you could just keep buying Skylake devices, you're wrong. We're already running out. Now some of my clients got letters telling them they'd have devices through August or September, but they're starting to see that orders aren't getting fulfilled. Some of my larger clients got letters from their OEM um, providers that said, we're going to give you these models, and they're starting to see maybe that's not going to happen. And more importantly, a lot of my clients went ahead and bought a few thousand laptops in order to buy some more time to make this transition, uh, which is a very costly capital expenditure. But if you hadn't started your Windows 10 migration a few months ago, you're already behind the eight ball. So again, no safe haven here. I hope that that's enough foundation for us to kind of move forward with the rest of today. But if you need a primer, go back and, and watch the March webcast where we talk more about that. So really what this means is that our, our, our systems management teams are bogged down at a time when we're more critical than ever, right? There's so much change. Windows 10 is introduced. We have all these hardware changes. There's a lot of external pressure. And a lot of organizations are making the mistake that thinking tools or people are gonna solve the problem. And I don't think that's true. I think we need to change our thinking about this and we need to put our focus on our productive users. And we need to understand that our users having a bad IT experience uh, can lead to reduced budgets in IT or pressure on us to do more things with fewer tools and fewer people. Our end users being able to install unauthorized apps or use unauthorized devices you know, presents a lot of risk to our organization. And really when it comes down to it is Non-productive users um, are a cost, risky users are a cost, and unhappy users are a cost, and that's something that we need to help change. Um, one other thing that I wanna talk about real briefly here is the cycle that we see. This probably looks familiar to you if you operate a systems management platform, right? You're constantly working to get ahead of the chains and an event happens, right? Either there's a cumulative update or a monthly patch run that doesn't go well, um, you wind up getting bogged down on that and you don't make progress on other initiatives or you lose some ground on your patch compliance. One trend that we've seen in the last six months um, since the changes in October of 2016 is patch compliance is in a nosedive right now. There's a lot of factors for that, but we have a lot of disruption in our hardware. We have people trying to introduce Windows 10 in an environment where they don't fully understand the implications and patching is getting harder because we have cumulative updates. We can't pick and choose our KBs. We have to roll them out. We still have quality problems from time to time, and we're just seeing an overall downward trend uh, in patch compliance numbers uh, that's having serious impact on, on our systems management teams because really you're expected to deliver on that 
no matter what's going on. So talking a little bit about where we're at, we've got to stitch some of our things together, right? We've talked about combining our, our tools, whether they're uh, more mature or less mature, but more relevant. Um, we have some processes we need to tackle. We need to look at how our tools are being used, but really there's a lot going on um, that is external to you uh, that you're going to be responsible for internally. And, and that's really why we're talking about saving your job today, right? So just keep this in mind as we talk a little bit here, but I know we really want to be on this trajectory, right? We want to get the tool implemented. We want to get uh, Windows 10 in our environment. We want to have a smooth experience that a lot of people are happy with. And that's a really hard thing to do. So let's talk a little bit about how we're going to get that going and how we're going to survive. So first thing, here's a few things you can ask to seem really smart, right? And I'm not implying that uh, any of us are not that smart. Uh, but what I've learned is that, especially with the creators update coming out, there are some significant app compatibility issues, right? Have you even tested it? So if you're not testing 1703 current branch right now, you're behind the eight ball. You got to get started on that. There's a lot of other things going on, right? I know that because of the increased um, patch sizes that are, are cumulative monthly and the reduced cadence, meaning we have to go faster, we got to start looking at our distribution architecture, right? If, if let's say a, a distribution point or package server for your particular tool only has a 40 gig disk on it and you think that's enough right now, I'm telling you it's not. You're going to need to exponentially increase the disk size for your distribution points because you're going to need to be able to grow as you have cumulative updates for your operating systems go out and you do a feature update for Windows 10 twice a year. So that's a capital expenditure, right? You might need to look at buying disks now or increasing um, storage on your SAN in order to account for that. That's a thing you want to know before it becomes a problem. Another area we've seen a lot of disruption around is Windows 10 telemetry, right? So if you're on this webinar and you're a CIO or a CSO or a CISO, hopefully you've already read Microsoft's statement on privacy in Windows 10. Um, hopefully you've examined the detailed articles they're providing on TechNet that show you exactly what telemetry they're sending and to where and how you can mitigate that. But if you haven't reviewed that, that information from Microsoft, you really need to know what's going on as 1703 gets into your environment because the list of telemetry it can send is extensive and you want to have those answers. Um, on that note, here are some resources we'll provide to you. Um, we have information linked here on basically Windows 10 releases, what they look like, what supported when, when did it come out. If you don't fully understand the Windows uh, release framework, uh, which I would call Windows as a service, there's a quick start in a video that you should definitely watch. Uh, Microsoft is also publishing a complete uh, manifest of what's new in each version of Windows. Um, so I've linked to 1703 here because that's the most recent release and you'll want to know what's going on. And then a couple of new things. Um, one, Microsoft has recently announced that they are aligning their releases for Windows Office, and they mean Office 365 there, and Configuration Manager so that you as a systems management admin can keep up to date and kind of keep a, a, a common cadence around this, right? These things are all linked together. What's the common link? Our productive user, right? They're using a Windows device, they're using Office 365, and we're using Config Manager to manage it in many cases. And so Microsoft is going to align all of that what that really means is you should expect significant updates to all three of those platforms every March and September. Now they were a little late in April, um, but that remember we're coding it 1703 means March of 2017. You're gonna have a new version of Windows here in, in, in just a few short months that you need to get prepared for and you need to make sure your underlying tools and your productivity applications are gonna be keeping pace with that. And then finally, I alluded to this on the previous slide. Uh, Microsoft has released a statement to the public on Windows 10, how they're managing privacy, what kind of telemetry can be turned on and off, and you definitely want to understand what's going on there. So let's talk about a few simple things you can do, right? What'd you come to hear today? Well, I've laid a lot of foundation um, thinking, right? I've given you some evidence of my claims, I think. So here's what I think you need to do. One, you need to accept the new reality of Windows 10. You are going to update it every month for security and you're going to update it every six months for features and you can't you can't say no. 
until it's just be transparent about it. You have to take these updates. So you've got to transition your IT organization and your thinking in order to accommodate that. Part of that process is knowing the new architecture, right? You need to understand how releases are coded. You need to understand how often they come up. You need to know what it means to move from insider preview to current branch, to current branch for business. You need to understand why LTSB is a completely separate piece of the architecture and you can't move between those two. You need to know and learn what a servicing plan is, what a servicing channel is, and how you're gonna manage these rapid releases in your environment. And finally, we need to start planning for that new cadence, right? So if we accept it, we understand it, we need to start making plans now because I'm telling you there's a new version of Windows coming out in four months. That means a version of Windows you probably have in your environment today, which it looks like a lot of our customers do. We got to find out how to start moving that migration today, not tomorrow. And then finally, the most important, important part of this is sharing with your communities, right? Whether that's a CISO working group, um, a CIO panel, uh, a config manager user group or another tool user group, um, a Windows, um, you know, in the enterprise group, uh, TechNet forums or any of the other third party forums, sharing this information and bubbling to the top or your consciousness, some of these things that Microsoft's putting out in their documentation sites is really the way you keep ahead of these changes. Um, I can think of many of my clients who were caught completely by surprise when they had Windows 7 clients of, of new, new hardware where the updates just turned off last month and not being able to explain that to your director, your CIO or, or your CISO, why our patch compliance took a nosedive this month and why our Windows 7 devices just simply stopped patching. We have to understand the impact of Windows 10, its requirements, uh, the, you know, I would term it collusion with the hardware makers on this and kind of forcing our transition. And, and we need to be talking about that and supporting each other. So I wanted to touch on very briefly as we close up here, some late breaking news. Microsoft held an event this week. Um, they introduced a new version of Windows 10. It's called Windows 10 S. Uh, it's the evolution of RT, uh, which means that we ha now have a new version of Windows, which you can't do a lot of things. Uh, you can't run PowerShell commands. You can't open a command window. Uh, you can't do a lot of things. Think of it as a Chromebook, but running Windows. Um, that was launched in conjunction with a piece of hardware you're seeing on the screen called the Surface Laptop. It's basically a MacBook Air, except it's not a Mac. Um, seems like a pretty good deal so far, but don't buy a bunch of these and expect them to be managed by your on-premise systems management tool because they're not gonna be. Uh, this is gonna be a use case for one of those new cloud tools that we talk about as being a little less mature, but more relevant to what you need. Um, so this is a discussion you're going to want to have before somebody starts buying things. So as we get to the top here, um, you know, I think that's about it for things that I can tell you. Hopefully you learned a few new things for me. Um, hopefully I'll help at least one of you totally kill it at your next IT committee meeting. Uh, I got to plug this stuff, guys. If you want more insights, uh, we got them. Uh, we'll be compiling any questions we received today, and we'll send a follow-up out to everyone who registered. We'll also send you the, uh, the URLs for the links that I provided and a link to both the recording of this webinar and the most previous one. Uh, if you are thinking that you need some help, please reach out to us um, after this webinar directly. Um, we'll connect you with somebody in our advisory group, um, try to help you gain a new understanding or foundation on some of these concepts. Uh, if you're at the point where you think you need some help getting operational, our managed services group can certainly help you out in that area. So with that, I want to thank you. Um, we'll do our follow-ups. We'll see you in a few weeks on the next webcast. We're going to talk more about 1703 and what's going on. Uh, we'll also give you a preview of the next release of Windows 10, which we believe will be called 1710, and uh, help keep you ahead of uh, you know the person in the next cube, or at least the person in IT that you hate the most. So thanks and have a great day and look forward to talking soon.